Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the same thing as usual, which is trying something different. We are going to use some alcohol markers for the first time. Before we start, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do. I post art videos whenever I can. Today we have an interesting project. We are going to use alcohol markers for the first time and I have about 15 colors. I have two that are another brand. This one is the first alcohol marker that I had. I didn't know what it was when I bought it. I bought it a couple years ago and I never really used it because I didn't really know how to use it. But since I've learned how to use alcohol markers, I decided that I wanted to have a, a small kit and I wanted to try to use them in my sketchbook. So today that's what we're doing. We're doing two portraits of the 100 head challenge. And these portraits to me have interesting colors and I thought that it would be really nice to use alcohol markers on them. So that's what we're trying today. Alright, so now we just finished the sketching part with my pencil and now what I'm doing is that I'm adding an outline in ink and then after that I'm going to erase the pencil layer and only work with the ink layer. I don't know if this layer is going to show through the markers but I figured that if it did, red would be a nice color. I just feel like red is always a nice color for an outline in general and in portraits. I am finishing the sketching part and soon we are going to be able to go swatch some colors. So here are all of my markers. I have a couple, as you see, there's two that didn't come in this kit, but I have a bunch and I'm very excited to use them for the first time. But now my first question is, which marker am I going to use to do the skin tones? In my kit, I had one marker that looked like it could be a good option for a skin tone, but when I swatched it, it was very dark. So it's good for a darker skin tone, but I thought it would be lighter and I thought that I could layer it to make it darker if necessary. So it would be a good marker to do a, a big range of skin tones. Since swatching it, I realized that it's too dark. I can only do, let's say like medium to dark skin tones with it. So I needed another marker that would allow me to do the lighter skin tones. I went back to the art store and I got one. When I went back home, I realized that I already had one that I had bought a couple of years ago that I didn't really use. So now I have three options. We are going to swatch them because I think it's really important to know exactly what they look like. First of all, we are going to start with the marker that I went back and bought after I bought the kit. So the one that I think is going to be lighter. Then we're going to swatch the one that I've had for a couple of years that I never really tried. So you can see it's a mid-tone, but it has a yellow undertone. And then we're going to swatch the one that comes in my kit. We have three different um, ranges of skin tones in these. The first one is a bit more pink. The second one has a yellow undertone and the third one is warmer too, but a lot darker. For the first portrait, I'm going to use the lightest marker. And for the second portrait, I'm going to use a mix of the two other markers that I have. So 
since I've never used an alcohol-based marker, and to be honest, it's been many, 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 many years since I've used a marker at all, I just decided to fill some large areas first and then work on some shading and some details afterwards. But I thought doing a first layer without worrying too much about shadows and highlight zones or anything would be the way to go. At first, when I applied my first few lines, I felt like the marker didn't really blend too much, but now we can see that it blended pretty well. So I think maybe it's just a matter of time before it starts blending. I'm not sure. Now that we are here, I thought that I could tell you a bit more about the different types of markers that we can find. I did some research this time too. I guess I'm taking a liking in knowing what I'm talking about, <laughs> which is good. So there are two main types of markers. We have the alcohol-based markers like I'm using today, and we have the water-based markers. There's two types of water-based markers. There's the normal water-based marker and there's the watercolor markers. I'll start with watercolor markers. The nice thing about them is, as the name suggests, you can use them a little bit like watercolors. So they blend and mix with water, which allows you to do some really nice effects. You can also reactivate them when they're dried. In a single marker, you're going to find a bigger shade range because it really depends on how much water you use. If you use a lot of water, the color will be more diluted, so less saturated. And if you use less water, the color will be more saturated. So you can really control that. The best paper to use with watercolor markers is a paper that is able to absorb just like watercolors. So you could use a watercolor paper that would work best. There's a couple of different ways you can use watercolor markers, which I think makes them really interesting. First of all, you can use them directly on paper, just like you would with any other types of marker. Or you could put some water on the paper and then use the markers on top so the colors would blend, the colors would mix, just like watercolors, really. The third way you could use them is if you mix the colors on a palette and then you apply the colors on the paper with a brush, just like you would do with paint. It's nice because you can use them in so many different ways so you can create so many different effects. So I think it's a really interesting tool to have. I don't have any of these kinds of markers, but maybe one day. So the end results when you use these markers, well, it looks more like a painting, it has more texture, the colors can be paler, now, if we talk about normal water-based markers. In these markers, the pigment is suspended in a mix of water and glycerin. Some brands of water-based markers can be used like watercolor markers, but not all of them. So you really have to swatch them to see if it works or not. They take longer to dry than alcohol-based markers. And if you put too many layers on top of each other, they can really weaken the paper and maybe even rip it because there's too much water in the paper. So you have to be careful with that. Some brands of water-based markers can be blended, but not all of them. So I assume that you could buy like a, a colorless marker to blend your colors with, but apparently not all brands offer that. So you really have to do your research before you buy a kit, if that's an effect you want to do. These kinds of markers are often sold in a pack. They are very cheap compared to alcohol-based markers and they are rarely refillable. So when they're done, you have to throw them in the garbage.
The first portrait was so much fun to draw. I really like the vibrant colors. I like using the reds, the yellow, the oranges everywhere and the texture that was in her clothing. So that was a lot of fun to do. Now we just started the second portrait. Um, I got a little bit worried, I must say, because I realized that the skin area was a lot bigger. So I thought maybe it would dry out my markers, which doesn't make any sense because my markers are pretty much new. So if they were dried out already, then we would have a problem. But yeah, at first I was wondering if the drawing would appear more streaky which I think it did a little bit, but then I added more layers and it made the streaks go away. The thing that's really interesting with this portrait is that this lady has a darker skin tone, so I got to try my other markers and I got to really play with the layers this time. Oh, and I wanted to say sorry about the focus for this one. I'm still learning the best ways to place my focus when I'm drawing. And I feel like every time I'm getting better at it, but this time maybe I forgot something. <laughs> I forgot to do it right. So you're going to see that the focus jumps from time to time. I think I just didn't put the focus at the right place. So that's why it jumped like that. But still, you can see now that I'm adding a bit more layers to her skin. You can see that the streakiness goes away a little bit more and the result looks a bit smoother. For this one, I really like doing her makeup. I like trying to do a gradient in her bronzer, in her eyeshadows. I like doing her lips and the, the colorful flowers. They were really fun to do. Now let's talk about alcohol-based markers, the markers we are using today. A famous brand you might have heard about is the Copic markers. I don't have any of these, I just know that whenever I see them in an art store, I always think that they are so expensive. <laughs> They're like five to seven bucks a marker. So imagine buying like 20 of these. Oh my God, <laughs> So I'm not there yet. <laughs> but apparently they're very good. The name suggests they are alcohol based, so the pigment is suspended in alcohol and they evaporate very fast. So that's why these kinds of markers dry very quickly compared to the water based ones. Some of them are refillable and sometimes you can even replace the nibs once they are used. I'm not sure if the ones I have are refillable or if I can replace the nibs at some point, but I would really like that. So I'm going to do some research about that. These markers tend to be permanent, so you can use them on a lot of different types of surfaces. You could use them on metal, on fabric, on some wigs, <laughs> and you can't erase the markers after that. I've seen that they often perform better than water-based markers. Um, it's also possible to layer the colors but you are more limited in the saturation range. At some point, you're going to reach the maximum saturation and you won't be able to do much about that afterwards. And as you can see in my drawing, you start at a pretty high saturation. You can't go lower than that. The good thing about these markers though, is that since they don't use any water, they don't make the paper weaker when you add more layers. So you can really add a lot of layers without ripping the page. With these markers, another thing that's really nice is that you can blend the colors. So you could buy a colorless marker to blend the colors together. You could also use some rubbing alcohol or you can use a color that's in between the two colors you want to mix. That I didn't do when I was doing this drawing. So I'm really interested in trying it again and trying to blend the colors. I don't have a blender in my kit, but I could use some rubbing alcohol maybe or use an in-between color. So we'll see. The best type of paper for these is a smooth surface paper. So like in my sketchbook, they, these are good. But if the paper is too rough, it could damage the nibs. It's also best to use a paper that won't absorb too much water because you don't want the paper to absorb all the inks and leave your markers dry. 
The way to use them is like a regular marker, like the ones that you've used when you were younger, maybe. There's not a lot of fancy techniques like the watercolor markers. The end result compared to the watercolor markers will be a less textured drawing with brighter colors. And as I said before, these markers are often more expensive than water-based markers. Are you ready to see the final result? Well, you've already seen it, but here. I love them so much. It was so much fun to do as usual, I know. I always say that, but I have so much fun with this project. But especially with these, I knew that alcohol markers were known for their blendability. I knew that you could blend them together. They were less tricky than other kinds of markers. And also that you could put layers on top of each other and change their colors a little bit that way. And it was true. What's nice also that I thought that I could use in the future is what happened on the back of the page. As expected, the markers bled through the back I don't know, I think it did an interesting thing that I could use. Maybe if I add outlines on top of it with pen or something, I think there's something I can do with these. But yeah, love it, love it, love it, love it. Can't wait to do it again. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe so you make sure you don't miss my future videos. And if you like this video, leave me a like, leave me a comment below. I would love to know what you think about these. And until next time, take care.